What, when did you begin to do this? How old were you? I'm 80 years old. And you're? I'm 89. <laughs> <laughs> I did three rugs in um, 2004, the first time I ever did anything. I started in Iowa and I did that one with the lambs and the chickens and the farm. And funny thing is the uh, building looks like my garage before I even saw the garage. And Bob helped me with the uh, uh, Mellor ducks. I asked him what a Mellor, <laughs> Mellor duck looked like and he showed me. He drew pictures of Mellor duck. So I th drew three Mellor ducks on the rug. They look like bombers. But that was one of my first. The, the lamb, that, and I think Halloween, mm -hmm. those three. The subject matter is just trying to remember, mostly the past, trying to mem remember the good things of the past. And uh, just want to show the kids running around and doing things. And if you look at my rugs, I, I do a lot of little tiny things like uh, the North Avenue Beach, you could see the buildings in the background. You could see across the lake of Michigan, the kids playing there. And there's some fishermen over on the left, close to the buildings. One of the fishermen has a little fish. You gotta look really close. He's got a fish on a hook. I always try to put a little surprise somewhere, you know. One day Barbara asked me, what was like? What was I like as a kid? So I started to draw pictures of what she was like. I kept out the real bad parts, but put in whatever I could. That was it. I put in the book uh, songs that uh, the, the kids sang, brought home, like yellow leaves falling all the different songs and put little sketches next to them. Like springtime is coming. I drew pictures of the brothers and sisters over here on the left. And here, when she was born, the time she was born, and her first year trying to get a, a, a vaccination was impossible. She twisted and turned and they finally flipped her on her belly and shot her in the butt. It was, she was vaccinated. Barbara found her fingers <coughs> and toes. Excuse me. She's growing up. And sleepy time. Here's how Barbara began to play, play with the ball and trying to catch the pussycat. She says, I want my pussy cat. There's a pussy cat running around trying to get away from Barbara. And Barbara learning to walk at 10 months old, falling, getting up, walking again. Barbara mound toilet. She found the uh, aspirins and swallowed the aspirins and then told me that she swallowed about five. <laughs> so we tried to gag her, try to get it up couldn't and had to take her to the hospital. Doctors had to pump her stomach. She didn't mind the tube going down uh, up her nose and into the stomach. But then she had to go pee. And she started to yell that she had to go pee. And they wouldn't let her up. They strapped her down. And then she swore at the doctor. She learned to say, you son of a bitch. Yeah. So picnics in the summer. And Barbara went to one that was having games, you know. Uh, and she won every single game. She won a uh, ping pong ball and, and the uh, little uh, ball and jack and a little airplane. She won everything out of somebody else's picnic. <laughs> and this is, we were watching. There's Angie and I. Angie had Shirley, I had Richard, and we're all watching television, and our big dog, Rusty, is sleeping soundly on the floor with Barbara close by, 
and we're watching high all of silver. And she gets an idea and she mounts Rusty and he went crazy. He ran and dumped her off right on the side of the wall. That's in front of the yard. The kid's playing rough outside. There's on a bike and Rusty playing and here fighting with a kid in the classroom. The teacher asked Barbara to come to the front and Barbara started to walk to the front and a boy stuck his foot out. See where her hair? He tripped her and uh, everything was quiet for a while. She went back to her seat, but she crawled back and she started beating him up in the classroom. And then from there she had to go to the office for a long time. Barbara was very impressed with the movie Peter Pan. So he, she invented her own little uh, Indian and she called it Arrarar. So she really imagined this little Indian girl running around and playing. And one of my, uh, my husband's drunken friends came over one day and he thought he'd get in the game with her. So he would, you know, she was very upset because he wanted to be part of that little imagination. And uh, finally he got in there and he was playing RR. And then Charlie took a hammer and he squashed RRRR. The imaginary. The, the imaginary Indian. And she never saw RRR again. Oh. This was really insane when she went to the hospital that her, her uh, tonsils out and she wrote all this about her throat. Her damn throat was full of phlegm and everything. She wanted me to report it to the doctor and she said the nurses gave her three shots instead of two or one. And then she wanted me to get her friends to sneak in, you know, <laughs> to the hospital. But uh, this is a whole story called Dr. Caporelli. <clears throat> and the next day, when I went to pick her up, three kids were on uh, those little uh, wheelchairs. They were having a race in the aisle, you know. So that was... I worked at the Board of Trade the observatory selling tickets of you. It was an open view with all the windows open. I would open them in the morning. And this is what I saw. There's a John Hancock in the background. And uh, this is LaSalle Street. All the banks were up and down LaSalle, Continental Bank. And many of these buildings are already gone. New ones are up. But, uh, that's from the Port of Trade, 46th floor. The building was 615 feet tall, like a, like a, a throne. I really start with one little sheet of paper, and I, I get an idea. And at the time, I was sketching what I saw on just little scraps of paper. And then I have to get uh, something to, to make a tracer so that I could put it on, uh, on the linen that I'm going to hook. All of my wool is recycled material from Salvation Army Goodwill that my daughters bought. And I washed, stripped them of buttons and zippers and, and cut them on the cutter and uh, rolled them into balls for use. And that's what I do. Your wool has to run a certain way. You, one way it won't go, the other way it's even. And you put your wool in here, just like spaghetti. And you get your gauge, could be any thickness. And that's how you start. Of course, you, you wash the wool.
you put your linen that you're going to work on. Of course, I don't have anything sketched on it yet, but it fits on the frame tight. Like this. And of course you have to have your sketch on there. I do it in sections, small section, just the mount that fits on the frame. And then I move it to another section to work on. And in order to see if I'm doing all right, I usually remove it after I've done so many sections. I sit it up against something to see how well I've done. But it's all in little sections until you get the full piece of your rug. You take your wool strip that you've cut and you hold it mm -hmm. tight and you go under your fabric, your linen, and, and push it up against the linen and with your hook you find your, you feel with your finger, you feel the wool and you pull it up through the holes. Your wool is underneath, feel with your fingers and push your hook down and pull it through the holes. Wait one. When you want to do it, you can't. There. That's exactly how you do it. Try to get Whoops. Some of these holes. To finish the color, wait, hold it. I gotta feel the hook through the bottom. You wanna finish this color and go to the next little piece of wool. And your scissors. And that's it. This is my gift, but people should try to do something. And I think the earlier they start with their hands, keeping them busy, the longer they'll have being able to use them. But if you don't start, you don't have it at the end, you know. So I don't know what I could advise anybody. That would be a, start using what you have. <laughs>